What makes a truly great video game? Well, that's not an easy question to answer. However, I've got one answer for you, and I think that's if you look at a video game and it's so instantly recognisable, you know for a fact that they're doing something right. And the game we're talking about today is no exception. Bubble Bobble. Yes, that twin dinosaur platforming arcade classic is very, very popular, and there's a few reasons for it, but one of them in particular was who the game was designed for, and, spoiler alert, it's not for children. Yes. Really. Hello! Welcome to Brain Spill, the laziest show on the internet. My name is Tank, and today we've got to go back to 1986. The video games industry was still in its infancy, and many video games were considered simply to be just that, for infants. Video games were just seen as a pastime for children. We of course now know that as the original gaming generation grew up, the industry grew up with them, and this is now one of the most popular and widely lucrative art and entertainment formats there is. So, if this was the case in the past, and that they considered these games mainly for children, what was the trigger, what was the game that brought an entire generation up to potentially adulthood? Something had to happen where there was a new generation of gamers brought into the fray. Games which could be played by everybody, young and old, not just children. Well, I'm going to put forward that that game is probably... Bubble Bobble. Now, yes, of course I know that even when video games were first made, that it wasn't just kids playing them, obviously. But that was a general conception that a lot of people had, especially those that didn't play video games. And really, I think that's what a lot of this is about. Changing the general conception of the wider public as to what video games are for and what the purpose of them are. So, yeah, Bubble Bobble. This game series was developed originally by Taito, released in 1986. This game was built with cooperative play in mind. You play as either Bub or Bob, two boys who were turned into dragons who have to save their girlfriends from the evil cave monsters, jumping and shooting huge bubbles to help traverse many levels of epic platforming gameplay. It's pretty strange to look at this game and to have this considered as an iconic classic, especially back in the day where a lot of people probably looked at this and just thought, it's another platforming game. And it's one thing to see it in action, but it's another to play it for yourself. The person behind the creation of the game, Fukio Masuji, considered the games the studio had made before were a little poor. And really, it's probably best you get this quote straight from the horse's mouth. Taito's games then seemed kind of cheap and lame to me, both in terms of graphics and gameplay. They didn't have much style or sense, compared with Namco's offerings. They were very much lagging behind. Because I felt Taito's games weren't up to snuff, it actually made me want to challenge myself and my abilities to see if I could change that. He had worked on a number of lesser known titles beforehand, but it would really be Bubble Bobble that would be an iconic staple, a game that would really stand out from its competitors, and I think a lot of this came down to their decision making on who they were going to market the game to, and the decision to focus on a particular group, the ladies. With Bubble Bobble, my first most basic development concept was to make a game that girls could enjoy. Okay then, if it's girls we're talking about, I thought, well, what kind of things do young girls like to draw and sketch? I actually made a list of over a hundred different examples. From those, I drilled down and chose the ones that seemed like they'd catch people's eye. The result of that process of elimination was bubbles. Already having your established male audience, and now looking to create a game that would specifically appeal to women as well, it makes sense to create a game that is the best of both worlds. To get a game that everybody can enjoy. Something which, perhaps, cooperatively, they might be able to play. Hence, why they look to the prospect of getting people in couples, for example, who might enjoy playing a good platforming video game. In comes Bubble Bobble. So yeah, just as a hypothetical, if a couple go to the arcade and play a video game together, they decided that Bubble Bobble was the game for them. This clearly showed that this guy was a thousand IQ and well ahead of the curve. Back then, women were rarely seen in Japanese arcades. 
So I thought bringing more couples would help solve this issue. That's why I designed cute characters and included cooperative play in Bubble Bobble. And it gets better, as he could have just had a never-ending game or one where there is a simple one ending, like many games were back in that time. Everyone knows that these days, any good game has multiple endings in order to ensure that that replay value is, well, value. And Bubble Bobble was no different. They created the game to have different endings dependent on how well the players did and how well they worked together. And if they played well enough, they could get the true ending. So possibly if you were to play the game for the first time and get to the end and realize, oh wait, this isn't the true ending to the game. That means it gives more people to go back and start again and play through once more. Like I said, replay value. And of course, the true ending was, you know, saving your girlfriends in game. That's kind of the whole point of Bubble Bobble. So yeah, it's a fun, colourful game that can be played multiple times with a multitude of different co-op partners who you could team up with. When released, the game was an instant classic. The game was in arcade machines everywhere, ported to home consoles, and many spin-off versions would soon be made to try and replicate the success of Bubble Bobble. Just to cement the legacy this game left, numerous publications have put this game on their list of the greatest video games of all time, such as Your Sinclair Magazine putting the game at 58 in their top 100 games of all time. Stuff TV put the game on the number 47 spot, and Games Radar listed this as the 24th greatest Nintendo Entertainment System game of all time. That's a lot of accolades for a game about two dragons blowing bubbles at people. And at the time, it was quite revolutionary. There wasn't really a game like this before, and it certainly brought a breath of fresh air to a genre which was certainly still trying to get its legs. However, I think it's after the game's initial release, where its iconic status was established. It's easy to make a game and for people to get some enjoyment out of it. I'm saying that like I'm the authority on the matter, but bear with me here. It's easy to make a game that people enjoy at the time, but what makes a game iconic is being so defining in its genre that it stands the test of time, and even after all these years, is a title which has inspired game developers to build on the formula and create even more memorable titles. What I find even stranger about this is that the characters and the game of Bubble Bobble, although there are more titles being made, it was not milked dry like Sonic or Mario, like, these characters are well recognised for the fact that they've just really stuck to their lane and made games that people enjoy. So, clearly, the people that made these games are doing something right. And, like I said, even whilst there's still titles being made for Bubble Bobble, I'm sure that they will still carry this torch for many, many years to come. Go Bubble Bobble! If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe. If you want to be notified as soon as I upload my next video, be sure to hit the bell button. And if you've got any ideas for what topics you'd like me to discuss next, let me know down in the comments below. As always, sources used in the video will be in the description. Sometimes the answer is a lot more simple than you think. I could have gone down and broken this down into the very specifics of what makes this game great, and I'm pretty sure that people have somewhere online. However, I think the real answer is bang in front of us. And you know what? It's in the title of the damn game. Bubbles. Yep. That's all it takes. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.